Good morning, family. Hi. Hi, sis. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, um, I was just telling sis before this lesson that if I had to choose just one lesson from all 365 lessons, I would take this one. Lesson 185, I want the peace of God. And the reason for that is pretty much this was a pivotal lesson for me only recently after 30, well, whatever, 30 odd years of, of studying Course in Miracles. And it was just after we came back from Israel the last trip in 2019. I don't know if you remember that, sis. That was a great trip. It was a wonderful yeah. trip. Yeah. And um, I had an experience in Israel that, uh, hmm, what would you say, short-circuited the ego? <laughs> to put it mildly. You were struck blind. <laughs> I was. And uh, it was um, life changing, to say the least. And then I went through a two or three month period after that where I wasn't able to function in the world very well because of the experience. And, and from all of that, that sounds bad, doesn't it? It's not, it's not bad. It's not dramatic. It just is that what the big chunk of nook that was left, the ego, the mythical me, that chunk just fell away. Fell away. Yeah, she went and to an upgrade, a big upgrade. I love that. I love that upgrade. Mm -hmm. And during that time, Jesus revealed to me um, my one need during that time. And my one need, I know I'm summarizing here, but my one need was the peace of God. So that's why this lesson to me is anybody can awaken from any of the lessons, but this particular one for me means, means everything. I want the peace of God. Yeah. Thanks, sis. Feel you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And I want everyone to know this. You know to feel this, to live in this, to live out from this peace. So it's like, it's a big deal what you're sharing right now because the one that I know as Nook, you know, has given her whole life to this. And out of all of the lessons, She's telling us that this one has meant the most to her and you can feel the love that she has for all of us. And when she says she wants this for us, that's noteworthy. That's taking it in and really taking that seriously. Like there's something huge here for all of us if we'll join and open and receive. Thanks, sis. Uh, thank you for that introduction. Thank you, beautiful. True. What a beautiful sister I have here. Yeah, Holding beautiful. hands and walking home together. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So this is such a huge lesson if we're prepared or willing to open our heart and mind to this lesson. Yes. You know, it could, will transform our lives, literally. Yeah. And it'll bring in so much love, so much peace, so much joy, so much happiness, so much guidance, so much safety, so much security, <laughs> so much abundance. Who wouldn't want this lesson? Who wouldn't want to prioritize this lesson every single moment, no matter what? Right? Only the ego. Yeah, exactly. Because the ego disappears in this lesson and the body disappears in this lesson when we really take it in. So 
before we actually get into the meat or the juice of this lesson, mm -hmm. um, let me just kind of, Sis and I, to um, establish a foundation that might make it easier to sink into this lesson, uh, to allow the miracle of the lesson to be known and felt. Um, yeah. And, and so what I want to talk about is, is um, I want to say this because when I did this lesson for 25, maybe 30 years prior to my, my experience that we were just talking about in Israel, uh, I really didn't know the peace of God. I, I just, I, there was still a part that was a question mark, right? So that's why I'd like to just give you this. Hopefully we can quicken the journey for you. Hopefully it won't take you as long as it did for me. Impossible, yeah. Yeah. So, here. yeah. Well, thank you, sis. Um, so the peace of God, and this is my understanding, is changeless. It's a changeless peace imagine that changeless peace all right and so it's it's like a felt knowing of our incorruptible innocence we know it it's at the core of our being all our living we live from that essence so in that in that peace that changeless peace is a sense of um, of real in, invulnerability, all right? It's a, it's a knowing that we are immune to everything that is not of God. In other words, we're completely under the laws of God, right. right? We're not under the laws of the ego, but it's not just an intellectual knowing. It's a feeling, and it's in that feeling state that we've joined our mind with Holy Spirit. And... Yeah. Okay. So there's an infinite sense of safety and of security. Just imagine that. And abundance too, because we're under the laws of God, right? right. That's that. So this piece, um, so this piece is changeless. And any form of peace that we seek that is dependent on external circumstances like another person or perhaps maybe um you know what Sorry, the body know. yeah the body's state of health time what else finances finances i know mind yeah i know mind yeah okay um trying to achieve accomplish to lift our self-esteem the ego self-esteem all if our, if our forms of peace that we're seeking are dependent on, on these things, which are idols in the gap diagram, yes. right, mm -hmm. then mm, they're going to fail us and yeah. we're going to lose our peace. Right. Yeah. It's only the peace of God that gives us that inner security, that inner knowing, that inner anchoring into the peace of God, the safety, the security of God, right? Right. Yeah. So um, the other thing that I wanted to bring up, let's just want to make a distinction between peace as we've been taught here in the world and pe the peace of God, because they're two very different things. Yeah. yeah. And, okay. it's, and just before we move off of this, yeah. just to feel into what Nook was saying, what is it that you are holding out like there's some elusive goal that the ego dangles in front of us right and it says when you attain this or when you have your demonstration or when you arise and have your holy relation whatever it's always going to give you some goal that says you don't have it now but when you achieve this then you will experience peace and happiness right mm -hmm that's the game so like let's recognize it and see if we will be talking about this a little later but identifying in what ways we still think there is a piece apart from 
the peace of God, because what we're wanting to do is save a lot of time here and shine the light on it and show that it'll never pay off. It never does. It's fear and it's just kicking it down the road, kicking it down the road because it's not changeless. It's going to fall away. It can be, you can be deprived of it in a moment, but there is a peace that will never fail and cannot leave you. And that's found in your relationship with God. That's it, sis. Thank you. And and the thing is that with the egos, um, with the egos, what do you call it, peace, you know, its goals that it sets in yeah. the future, by setting it in the future and saying that we'll reach peace when we've attained one of the ego's idols or goals or whatever, mm -hmm. we're always setting it in time. That's right. It's a, and that's when, we, when we... Right, okay, yeah. we'll never get there. Yeah. The peace of God is now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now. And now. And can you feel why when you hit the wall that nothing is wrong? Uh, like when we hit the wall, the ego goes, oh my God, you know, crisis time, and this is the worst, and I'm dying. And it's like, no, you finally are willing to recognize that all those those promises are fraudulent like you really get in that moment that what you thought would pay off didn't that's all it was and now you're starting your journey back within turning within and finding that peace that does not fail you that's always with you had we just stopped and turned within it's a good good time it's a holy time anybody in there uh, like sluts, <laughs> cutting their throat dark night of the soul it's all good <laughs> It's all good. I think we're the only two people on earth who say it. <laughs> it's all good. You've hit the wall. Great. Let's celebrate. Yes, that's right. <laughs> You're better There's than you've been. Wrong. Yeah. 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 Because like like Jesus says in uh, the manual for teachers, mm -hmm. in the development of trust, the six stages mm -hmm. of awakening. Yeah. Yes. That first stage, we have to hit the wall. That's right. There's no you know, we have to become disillusioned totally. with the ego seeking its completion in the gap. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And Thank it you. takes something big. It really does. A divorce, loss of job, identity crisis, um, you know, a, a disease or a, a death diagnosis, prognosis. Yeah. Something like that <laughs> is what it takes to really shake us and, and turn us to the inner journey. Hmm. So again, mm. that's not on accident either. No, no. Thank you. Yeah. So getting back to our um, lesson here, mm -hmm. preparation for the lesson. <laughs> um, this is something else that was shown to me a couple of years ago, was that all prayers are answered in the peace of God. Okay. And no prayer can be answered if it is something that we want more than the peace of God. Does that make sense? Totally. Because there is nothing more than the peace of God. So all prayers are answered in the peace of God. I mean, how big is that? It's and huge. I mean, how many of us, whenever there seems to be an emergency at the form level, you know, something pressing, a problem, how many of us go to the peace of God? immediately the peace of god and rest there ah. for inspiration and guidance yeah. no what we do is what oh we rely on the mythical me and we exclaim and we're aghast at what we're looking at and we start to dive in and we share it with others and we try and figure out what we're going to do about it and we set off we never even check in with god 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 is always the last resort. It's usually after the world says, sorry, son, you're screwed. Yeah. That, we, that then, you yeah. know, we turn to God. But yeah. he says, you know, only salvation is said to cure. And that is forgiveness and accepting the atonement. That's drawing close to God and seeing my knowledge of God is the answer to this illusion that I have been feeding. And so I need to make room for and invite the memory of God to arise within my mind. That's the light. 
that casts out the fear because that thing that you were gawking at and trying to handle on your own is nothing more than the projection of the fear that's in your mind. So let's go for the root. Let's get the cause of the problem, which is this fear and guilt in the mind. When that makes contact with the light that's in your mind, the Holy Spirit, the voice for God, that is cure indeed. That is eradication and it will never return. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. Thank Good. you. Yeah, because once we've once we've judged a problem and we immediately go into monkey mind thinking, I know mind, right? And go, okay, I need to sort this problem out. Yes. We're gone. We believe the problem's real. Yes. And we throw the peace of God out. It's the only place, the only instant, the holy instant where it can be solved. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to play devil's advocate. So, look, if I, you know, see something like injury or an accident or something, and yeah. all my senses are telling me that something's really wrong. And heck, let's just put a loved one in the in the accident. How on earth am I supposed to access the peace of God when the, the anxiety and adrenaline's pumping? What do I do? Good question. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I, what do I do then? Uh, I join. Yeah. I absolutely know when I am at the, the seeming mercy of sense that I will turn to one who's not down the rabbit hole with me. I will turn to a brother or sister and together we look at it and the saner mind, the one that has the light will shine the light into my mind. There's nothing faster. Yeah. It's, I'll have to agree with you on that. Very helpful. In fact, I do it so naturally now that I don't even think about it. Yeah. You know, if if the trigger is is too extreme, mm -hmm. then I will either join with you or join with um, Daniel yes. and we will that light, the light in the other's mind lights lights my mind and eradicates the darkness. Mm -hmm. The whole idea that there is a problem. Yeah, I find I can get there eventually with just Holy Spirit or asking Jesus, but why would I want to suffer for a couple days, you know, maybe, um, where I can join with a holy relationship partner and have it done in five to ten minutes? It's, it's the truth. Just come back to sanity. You can come back to sanity so quickly and, and then become part of the solution instead of looking and feeding into what's never been with your emotions or or talking about it or being afraid of something that never existed to begin with so good and i i think that in this lesson it mentions that oh, about union okay. about joining Yay. the of god is really known yes in that so my brother that's helpful okay so you know like because in in that and i know i mentioned this before but it's in it's in that peace of God, uh, and in joining, especially joining with a brother or sister, who doesn't go down the rabbit hole. What they do for us is they act as a divine mirror to shine the light of our incorruptible innocence back to us. Yes. And it's it's that we get that reflection, and we're like, oh my God, I am not the ego this problem's not real i am innocent in the eyes of god and my brother so therefore we can drop our fear and in dropping our fear the peace of god is there the problem doesn't need to exist any longer no right yeah thank god for our brothers and sisters on this path i have been in my most insane moments and i will call nook and before the whole thoughts even out i know that she's looking right at me and she doesn't have to say a word like she's just looking at me and there's nothing in her <laughs> there's <laughs> nothing in you sis that will bite at the apple no 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 and not sarcastic but she's like she's just shining her eyes are steadfast and she's just with the christ in me and kareen squawking <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> very loudly. I mean, I'm like 
flustered and my dander's up and I'm, you know, spewing and, but she's right there. And all I have to do is look into her eyes. And that is what kicks me out of it. It can happen so quickly, but I mean, what a miracle to have a, a buddy or a holy relationship partner that can, that just goes, I'm, I'm here to just be the light and nothing that, you know, your mind is, you're, you're gone for the moment, but I'm calling you back. Yeah. That's it. Steadfast. Yes, steadfast, unwavering. Thanks for being so uncompromising and unwavering. I don't even Thank remember what my last thing was, but it was intense, but you know, you popped me right out of it. So <laughs> <laughs> Thank wow. you. Thank you. Okay, so maybe we should start the lesson itself. Let's do it. Lesson 185. 185, sorry, there's a fly in front of me. I want the peace of God. Okay, I'll read it. To say these words is nothing, but to mean these words is everything. If you could but mean them for just an instant, there would be no further sorrow possible for you in any form. Wow. And wow, that's just mind blowing. I'm going to say that again. If you could, if you could, but mean them for just an instant, there would be no further sorrow possible for you in any form, in any place, or time. Wow, heaven would be completely given back to full awareness, memory of God, God entirely restored, the resurrection of all creation fully recognized Oof. yeah this is not metaphor yeah. it's literal okay paragraph two no one can mean these words and not be healed i want the peace of god he cannot play with dreams nor think he is himself a dream Mythical me in the gap, right? Mm -hmm. He cannot make a hell and think it real. He wants the peace of God and it is given him. For that is all he wants. It, underlined. Yeah. Well, it's underlined in my copy yes. because I've underlined it about 25 times over the last 31 years. <laughs> it's so funny. Okay. For that is all he wants and that is all all he will receive. Many have said these words, but few indeed have meant them. You have but to look upon the world you see around you to be sure how very few they are. The world would be completely changed should any two, any two people, agree these words express the only thing they want. Two minds with one intent become so strong that what they will becomes the will of God. For minds can only join in truth. In dreams, no two can share the same intent. To each the hero's of the dream is different, the outcome wanted, not the same for both. Loser and gainer merely shift about in changing patterns as the ratio of gain to loss and loss to gain takes on a different aspect or another form. Can we stop here? And can we bring out the gap diagram, please, sis? Thank you. All right. Now, that's what he's talking about. See the two split minds on either side, person number one, person number two. And they have agreed uh, or made uh, a vow mm -hmm. to, to maintain their mythical me status, to see each other's bodies and to hail all of the idols in the gap way above God and their holy self, right, yeah. as the, you know, the whole purpose of life and being. Yeah. 
But when two people come together who agree that they want to overlook or forgive the gap entirely, the body, the gap, the idols entirely, then when those two people want, see at the top there, it's got peace of God equals forgiveness. When those two people want only the peace of God, that's their intent above everything in the gap, the whole world will be healed. So that means, and the key here now is, I think many of us understand we want the peace of God. And where we're at is, but do you also want something in the gap? Are you trying to bring some idol, something in this picture, or even the idea that you are the mythical me in here? Because it can't come, hmm. right? That's the problem. You can't, there is no mixture. One precludes the other. And so to have this, it's why Jesus uses those words and it's all that he wants. We're always experiencing what it is we want, our desire, be it unto you, son of God. You know, it's, it's our desire that governs our experience. That's the law of perception and this rule of accountability. Nothing's random. You're not a victim. It's a choice. And so many of us want this and we've experienced flashes, uh, temporary um, experiences of walking around as the Christ, uh, seeing with Christ vision, knowing yourself as you are. And then we say, but we seem to lose it, right? The world seems to pull us back in with the physical sense and the I know mind and our special relationships and this persistent sense of this body as housing what we are. These need to be forgiven and released. So now it's about just identifying those things that I would try to hold on to as opposed to wanting only this. This is all that I want. And we've got to come to the full recognition and be able to admit to ourselves that there is nothing in the gap that is going to serve, pay off, mm -hmm. or fulfill us. And I think, thank you, sis. One thing that we tend to overlook, mm -hmm. right, when you open the gap up there, yes. you can see the negative sign and the positive sign on either side there. Yes. It's not just the idols that we seem to want in the gap. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's also what we fear right. because they are idols mm -hmm. as well that we want. Mm -hmm. Whatever we fear unfortunately we want that's right okay and that's why we keep having it repeated you know disease pain aging whatever it might be conflict uh, relationship conflict yeah abandonment betrayal mm -hmm. why we hate it but we want it the ego wants it not us right yeah well the fear blocks us to the memory to the love that we are so we come up with hundreds thousands of different things in the gap that keeps us looking feeding it fretting it pursuing it doesn't matter it's as long as that mythical me is, is doing something apart from god that's that's the whole ego's plan right it we carved out some place where god is not and so but the beautiful thing is then the ego goes well how on earth am i ever going to exhume all of the stuff in the gap it's just impossible may as well give up you know, the beautiful thing is about God's grace, all Holy Spirit ever does is wait for our willingness to look with him and invite him to, to see what we've made in our gap and hand it over. You're not even required to undo it. It's to, because you can't undo it. The mythical me cannot um, heal. It cannot save. It doesn't know anything about forgiveness or divine love. So we just show where we have our idols and where we're still stuck in the gap seemingly. And we show that over to Holy Spirit and say, take this from me. Heal my perception. Now, how yeah. easy is that? It is. that. That's great, sis. And, uh, and one wonderful thing that happens with this, and we've had this experience many, many times, mm -hmm. is that when we offer something sincerely up for forgiveness, when we really, really genuinely uh, go, I don't want to do this anymore, mm -hmm. and we, we offer Holy Spirit our willingness, we accept the atonement, which is the undoing, right, of the guilt and fear that caused it in the first place, we think 
from our one dimensional mindset here, <laughs> we think that, well, that's one, that's one of the idols that's been taken care of in the gap. Mm -hmm. But what happens later on when we look back, we realize that, oh my God, you know, half a dozen or more other idols are also healed. Mm -hmm. How the hell did that happen? How in heaven did that happen? Right? And, and then we see that Holy Spirit heals holographically. Mm -hmm. He yes. just needs our little willingness. Well, it's a lot of willingness. <laughs> but it, to heal a few of these idols and, and then he has healed layers and layers and layers I believe and Jesus does say that somewhere in the course too that in that healing in accepting the atonement he actually heals um, all the dimensions of time that we've ever believed that we were in and were guilty of right so the atonement is holographic for every yeah. lifetime, every, right. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like and you know, people yeah. say, oh my, I've done this forgiveness. I've accepted the atonement on this problem and still it lingers. What did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. Holy Spirit looked at it with you, but Jesus is very clear that he doesn't use fear to undo fear. So Holy Spirit comes in, will scour in, the light will come into our minds and heal, heal, heal until it hits some resistance in us because to heal beyond that would frighten us even more. So mm -hmm. if it doesn't seem that the problem's completely gone, it's because there's some still some level of resistance where we think that to have it completely healed would be terrifying or to be completely healed would deprive us of something that we still value. That's what needs now to be handed over. Holy Spirit, where am I still blocking you from taking this completely from me? There's still what? some fear I'm not in touch with yet. Yeah. Oh, wonderful question, sis. That's so helpful. Yeah, that was a big it one. It takes us out of that dreadful self-doubt, which is fear. Yeah. yeah, we've done nothing wrong. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. Beautiful, beautiful recommendation. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, okay, so the next is um, paragraph four. You're on paragraph yeah. four. Yet <laughs> compromise alone a dream can bring. So that's what the gap is, just compromise, right? Sometimes it takes the form of union. Oh, he's speaking about special relationships, yes? Yes. Not, not the union, the holy relationship that he's speaking about in the two paragraphs before, yeah? Mm -hmm. Paragraph three and two. He's speaking about the holy relationship here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So then he, he gives a contrast in paragraph four of the special relationship. He says, sometimes it takes a form of, the form of union, mm -hmm. but only the form not the content, right, of union. The meaning must escape the dream for compromising is the goal of dreaming. Minds cannot unite in dreams. They merely bargain. Mm. So can you go back to the gap diagram again, please, sis, just very quickly? Yes. Yep. What are we doing? Okay. So the two split minds get together in a relationship and they each have their own uh, private minds, mm -hmm. which they keep separate. Yeah. Right. Okay. And their own personal agendas mm -hmm. to get yes. apart, you know, separately. Yeah. Self uh, gratification, etc. Yeah. So they each have separate dreams. So what Jesus is saying here is those separate dreams cannot be shared. Right. It's okay. insanity. Only, what, only what's real can be shared. And so these two dreaming minds are insanity. They're insane, right? You've got two minds believing that they're this figure. Mm -hmm. And both of these, as soon as you left, it's a state of lack, a state of unworthiness from leaving, allegedly leaving God. 
So all we do is become these split minds and we're getting machines. So in our special relationships, we come together, you're going to witness and, and fortify this body and I'm going to do that for your body and you're going to play the script of my old wounds and from my childhood and I'm going to represent your mother and from your wounds and we're going to have this beautiful relationship and try to join and he said bot and, and that's where bodies try to join but bodies can't join he's very clear on that only minds can join and only when this occurs right only when the right mind occurs yeah that's, that's right. right this alone yeah. is joining the split mind can't join because it's insane. Bodies can't join. True joining is when two go, I'm going to allow this to occur, either for a moment or in a, in a prolonged relationship. Yeah. It's truly common purpose that can be shared. And yet when you look at that gap, mm -hmm. most of us, um, are, you know, who still believe in special relationships and mythical me and the body, yeah, when we join, we seem to have many common goals mm -hmm. in there right mm -hmm. but they're common goals that cannot be shared that's right Is, am i making this clear yeah totally so if somebody has um raising know, a family come on yeah like well raise two minds both can agree that they want you know their personal pleasure drives satisfied or they've got guilt and fear but it's going to be different right they're never going to match up. It's conflicting wills, differing goals, and we're we're always the people pleasing, the the keeping score, the abandoning ourselves in uh, inauthentic communication. We can feel it. It's all a game. We're never actually showing up with somebody and allowing that holy instant to occur. We're hiding and wearing masks, mask, and being you know really inauthentic. So yeah. nothing truly ever occurs. All communication is blocked. So, yeah, and and so therefore in the special relationship, the people who are in the special relationship mm -hmm. don't hold the number one priority, which is forgiveness of each other. Yeah. Right. They don't they don't hold that number one priority. They have they have their personal gain agendas. Mm -hmm. And if the other person doesn't meet their ego's personal gain agenda, they yeah. I like Off that. Your head. Yeah, you don't, your head. You, don't, you don't serve my needs anymore. You're out. That's it. Don't love you anymore. That's you right. bastard. <laughs> you got to love. And that's, and that's love right there. Yeah, right. That's hate. Mm -hmm. Guys, is love. Thank you. I'll keep going. This is a long lesson, but it's worth right. it. Yep. So he says here back in um, paragraph four, uh, minds cannot unite in dreams. They merely bargain. <laughs> That's what two people do in special relationship. And what bargain can give them the peace of God? Impossible. Illusions come to take his place, God's place. And what he, God, means is lost to sleeping minds intent on compromise, each to his gain and to another's loss. To mean you want the peace of God is to renounce all dreams. For no one means these words who wants illusions and who therefore seeks the means which bring illusions, the body, body identification, right, and special relationships. He has looked on them and found them wanting. Now he seeks to go beyond them, recognising that another dream ego dream would offer nothing more than all the other ego dreams right dreams are one to him and he has learned their only difference is one of form for one will bring the same despair and misery as do the rest so that's the disillusionment that's where we all come to it's like oh okay i get how this works and i'm not gonna bite at the other another apple i'm not gonna go get another special relationship i'm not going to seek answers where there aren't any i'm i get it i'm done turn around right and, and yeah sorry yep. mm -hmm. yeah no that's good sis because you know my big whopper my beginning of stage one the undoing and i don't want to take up too much time was was six years after my beloved Tomas and I made the vow mm -hmm. um, 
and we made this vow to each other. Mind you, the course wasn't in our life, right? So it didn't give us the means. We made the vow that no matter what and no matter who might seem to come between us, mm -hmm. let us never abandon each other. That was the vow. Holy Spirit gave it to him and I both. We made that vow. We had an incredible experience. But because we didn't have the course back in those days, we, we, we didn't know about special relationships. We didn't know how to undo it. So we went through six years where the relationship actually got worse. It became a highly dysfunctional, toxic relationship. Yeah, even after taking that vow. It wasn't until 1990 um, that the course came to us. And then I think it was at page seven or something early on in the text, I realized, oh, my God, this is Jesus. Mm -hmm. I've been waiting lifetimes for this. And this is what we need. And I remember that was the beginning of the undoing mm -hmm. for me. You know, I can almost put a pin on the date in 1990 when that began. That was the beginning of the undoing. That was the beginning of my willingness mm -hmm. to uh, hit the wall and see that the way that I thought relationships should be mm -hmm. uh, had to be raised to the ground. Totally undone. And, and it was a good thing. Mm -hmm. I was completely, utterly, totally disillusioned. It was a really, really powerful pivotal point and so was Tomas mm -hmm. and then we ended up from that point through the course we end up having the most uh, breathtaking holy relationship yeah it's beautiful yeah thank you for allowing me to share that personal experience no thank you and thanks to Tomas oh yeah he's right here yes he is <laughs> He's right here with us. Um, okay, so now I've forgotten where I'm up to, right? Uh, uh, so you're on paragraph six. Okay. The mind, which means that all it wants is peace, must join with other minds, for that is how peace is obtained. Is that a powerful line or what, sis? Yeah, I didn't, hadn't seen that for the holy relationship, but I just saw it just now. <laughs> Uh, must join with other minds for that is how peace is attained. See, it's unequivocal. It is. Yeah. And when the wish for peace is genuine, the means for finding it is given, as we found out, right? Mm -hmm. In a form each mind that seeks for it honestly can understand. Whatever form the lesson takes is planned for him in such a way that he cannot mistake it actually trumpets blow, you know, sound, I should say, um, if he is asking, if he's asking is sincere. You, you can hear Gabriel's trumpets, I, I tell you. <laughs> All right. But, it. Pay attention. Pay attention. But mm -hmm. if he asks without sincerity, there is no form in which the lesson will meet with acceptance and be truly learned. That's right. Let us today devote our practicing to recognizing that we that oh okay. Let us today devote our practicing to recognizing that we really mean the words we say. We want the peace of God. This is no idle wish. These words do not request another dream be given us. They do not ask for compromise nor try to make another bargain in the hope that there may be yet, may yet be one that can succeed where all the rest have failed. To mean these words acknowledges illusions are in vain. Requesting the eternal in the place of shifting dreams, which seem to change in what they offer, but are one in nothingness. That's the gap, all the idols in the gap. Everything in it, even though it changes, shifts, different stories seem to arise, we yeah. will come to that place where we recognize it's all the same. It's all the same, yeah. I think we're pretty close to seeing that now. <laughs> yes. Today, 
Devote your practice periods to careful searching of your mind to find the dreams you cherish still. What do you ask for in your heart? Forget the words you use in making your requests. Consider but what you believe will comfort you and bring you happiness. But, but be you not dismayed by lingering illusions, for their form is not what matters now. Let not some dreams be more acceptable, reserving shame and secrecy for others. They are one. And being one, one question should be asked of all of them. Is this what I would have in place of heaven and the peace of God? Wow. I wonder if we've got time to do that exercise at the conclusion of this lesson, sis. Well, I think that we should conclude the lesson and then invite those that wish to stay on because I, I think we really need to read the exercise and give them an opportunity to yeah. do what Jesus is pointing to here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Paragraph nine. This is the choice you make. Be not deceived that it is otherwise. No compromise is possible in this. You choose God's peace or you have asked for dreams. And dreams will come as you requested them. Yet will God's peace come just as certainly and to remain with you forever. It will not be gone with every twist and turn of the road to reappear unrecognised in forms which shift and change with every step you take. You want the peace of God, and so do all who seem to seek for dreams. You know, this is a big point he's making here. I've underlined it, right? Mm -hmm. You want the peace of God, and so does every other sleeping mm -hmm. child of God mm -hmm. want the same. They do. Deep within, that's what they want. Don't lose sight of that. For them as well as for yourself, you ask but this, when you make this request with deep sincerity, you want the peace of God. For thus you reach to what they really want and join your own intent with what they seek above all things, perhaps unknown to them, but sure to you. And so when we say, I want the peace of God, you cannot be asking for that as an individual. Your request is not honest. It is not sincere. It is not undivided unless you can say that and desire it for the entire sonship because you are one with that. You can't carve yourself out of it and say, I want the peace of God, but that SOB over there doesn't deserve it. It's the, it's the forgiveness of the gap in its entirety, all sleeping sons within the gap and asking on behalf, transcending self-interest, deeply desiring, why wouldn't we want this peace, unchanging peace where there is no compromise, where we live in the kingdom of heaven, we have claimed our inheritance for every sleeping son. That's it. Without exception. When you really ask, it means you're asking for the sum of which we all are a part of. Mm -hmm. That's a big one too. It is a big one. Mm -hmm. It is a big one. So there's no personal piece of God. No, it's not personal. Uh, that took me years to get that. I just yep. got it this year, so you're great. <laughs> Welcome, sis. Thank you. Okay, you have been weak at times, uncertain in your purpose, and unsure of what you wanted, where to look for it, and where to turn for help in the attempt. Help has been given you, and would you not avail yourself of it by sharing it? Wow, great question. No one who truly seeks the peace of God can fail to find it. For he merely asks that he deceive himself no longer by denying to himself what is God's will. Who can remain unsatisfied who asks for what he has already? Who could be unanswered who requests an answer which is his to give 
the peace of God is yours. For you, for you was peace created. Mm. Oh, wow. For you was peace created, given you by its creator and established as his own eternal gift. How can you fail when you but ask for what he wills for you? How can you fail? And how could your request be limited to you alone? No gift of God can be unshared. It is this attribute that sets the gifts of God apart from every dream that ever seemed to take the place of truth. All the idols in the gap. That's right. No one can lose and everyone must gain whenever any gift of God has been uh, sorry, requested and received by anyone. No one can lose and everyone must gain whenever any gift of God has been requested and received by anyone. God gives but to unite, right? Yes. So in, in our requesting and, re and receiving, accepting the peace of God, we are doing so for everyone. I mean, that, hmm, I'm, I'm just seeing some, a flash in my mind of all these uh, split minds in darkness. And when one of us, especially when two of us join in the peace of God, then the darkness of every mind is brilliantly lit by that peace of God. It goes out holographically to touch every mind. How powerful is that? Because there is just one mind. And, but the, and the, the key is any two minds that say this and only want that. I mean, there can't be anything left in the gap that there's any value to, but to recognize that two clear transparencies for God, wanting only the peace for God would be the awakening of the mind, the sleeping mind. So that hasn't happened in, in the dream yet. Right. There, there hasn't been two people right. who wanted only that and nothing but that, but we're coming close. Coming close. And that's why the, the seeming issues as those who become a clearer transparency ramp up so-called, not that there could be a ramping up of an illusion, but in the dream we have collectively agreed that there are some that are more serious than others. So the volume and the intensity and the imagery of the last holdouts um, seem to be screaming at this time. But you know, we've got, we have the ability to have the peace of God even in the face of those and just keep walking. Keep your focus on the atonement, what the truth is. Yeah. The ego's not going to appearances, right, sis? That's right. Just, yeah. that's right. Take Jesus' hand. See, see what appears to be a mountain and walk right through it. There is no mountain. Somebody told me that this morning. It's very helpful. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. We can't do that alone. We need each other. That's right. Thank you. Um, God gives but to unite. God gives but to unite. To take away is meaningless to him. And when it is as meaningless to you, you can be sure you share one will with him and he with you. And you will also know you share one will with all your brothers whose intent is yours. Oh, love that. Ah. Last paragraph. It is this one intent we seek today, uniting our desires with the need of every heart, the call of every mind, the hope that lies beyond despair, the love attack would hide, the brotherhood that hate has sought to sever, but which still remains as God created it. With help like this beside us, can we fail today as we request the peace of God be given us? Wow. I want the peace of God. 
above all else. I want the peace of God, right? Oh, wow. Thank so, you. sis, yeah. um, that concludes the lesson. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have here an amazingly uh, transformative exercise. I would call this exercise one of those immediate tools for a celestial speed up, really. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And the exercise comes from a book, and I can't remember the title of it. What is it? Uh, we talk about the. If this is in the end of death. No, really? Yeah. Is it? Where you're making two lists? Yes. Oh. I also. I don't think that you put it in the manual for holy relationship. I could be wrong. Well, I had written it down uh, here as coming from a manual for holy relationship. Okay. Um, because it was uh, embedded or included in a very valuable uh, um, essay in that book. And the title of the essay was The Miraculous Peace. Mm. Okay. So I think it's in a manual for holy relationship. But well, let's join. I'm just I'm going to read through the exercise and then we will put a link to that blog, which includes this exercise in the show more uh, and the description box below. Well, there's a few blogs. There's a couple. There's oh, there's a couple. Thank you for reminding me. Sure. There, there's two blogs that we're going to feature in there. If you, you feel guided to to uh, to read those or listen to them, they're on audio as well. And there's also a video that you, Sis, and I did in 2018. Oh. That very deep and meaningful video on the peace of God. Yeah. That, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So I think we'll put the link to that there. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So for the, the one that always has to achieve and wants to get, check all the check boxes and all that, take a deep breath. You don't have to do all of these, but please go within and ask your inner guide what would be helpful for you um, and to be open to reading a blog, maybe two, maybe taking in the video. OK, um, but the reason that we do this, it's not there's no judgment and expectation. Nook and I simply want to set the table and make it as sumptuous a feast as we can because we love you. There will be those who want to take, put a toe in the water and withdraw. We love you and you will be back. There are those that want to take a deep dive who are hungry and need this message right now. And for that, we want to give you the five course meal. So that's why we do this. So here it is. Receive should you feel guided. And if you don't, please, no judgment. Be gentle with yourself. Holy Spirit knows exactly where you are and what you need. And you're being carried. So let's look at the ways in which we say we want the peace of God and yet we don't experience it, but because there are things still in the gap that we're valuing and be open to what you're valuing might be something that we would normally refer to as negative, or it may be one of those obvious positives. We still hold it, are still holding out that it might give us something we want. The only reason we're doing this is to bring light to those beliefs that are hiding in your awareness. We just want to bring them out, not to judge, but to hand them over to Holy Spirit. So this exercise is entitled, What Do You Want More Than the Peace of God? And we're asking you to make two lists, all right? These two lists are going to assist you to bring your desires. Remember, the power of what you want is what you're experiencing. That's how powerful the mind is both the positive and the negative ones. So make a positive, split it down the middle, put the positives on the left, negatives on the right. Let's uh, make these two lists, bring them up to, up to the light so you can ask Holy Spirit to look upon them with you. In the light of true perception, you can ask him to reveal what really is valuable and what is not. This is that sorting out process that Jesus talks about. This highly effective practice accelerates the healing process. So list number one of the positives is for all the things you still believe you want here in the dream. Take your time, be radically honest, and be specific as you can. These may include financial security, 
um, a healthy body or a better body, um, romance, um, sex, more sex, better sex, a home, um, a type of home, a, a car, a specific car, etc. So what are those things that the ego is still dangling out in front of you and that you're certain that once you achieve this, then you'll have arrived, then you'll be happy, then you'll be satisfied, right? Okay. There's one there too, sis, and I, and I, I have to include that too, is, sure. is, is um, one that the ego will overlook, is that say a loved one is quite ill. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, can we put that in that list too, or is that in, this, in the... Um... So healing. Yeah. Healing for self or other. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, or other, which only means healing at the form level. Yeah. We just want the body to report something better. We yes. don't want to see the fearful images. Okay. All right. Um, the other list on the other side of the page, your negatives. These are comprised of the beliefs and the values, people or relationships, events and circumstances things and experiences which cause you concern, stress, fear. Uh, they may be in the past, occurring now, or fears of the future. So would these be things that we defend ourselves against, right? Yes. That we feel that, you know, our, our peace comes from defending. That's right. From making sure we're well defended against these fears. Yeah. And so a past one would be, I will never allow that to occur to me again, that real abuse, that real victimization. So I'm always on the lookout for it. So I'm never going to experience that again. Or a present threat, like, you know, uh, the idea of a pandemic or uh, environmental threat or a boss that you can't stand or whatever. Um, a future is, I don't want to be, I'm afraid I'm going to be broke. I'm afraid I'm going to be sick like my mother was. I'm afraid of whatever, just our future projections. These are all areas of unforgiveness. This list may include unresolved factors in your own spiritual journey or recurrent issues with a sense of unworthiness or unforgiveness. Again, please be radically honest and specific. All right. Now with radical self-honesty, take list one and go through each of the desires, asking the following questions and answering them. Here's the question. What do I hope to accomplish in choosing to value or believe this positive or negative desire more than I desire only the peace of God? So what do you think that that is going to bring you? What is the ego telling you that you stand to gain when you obtain that in the gap more than the peace of God, just give voice to it. I think I'm going to be supremely happy. I think I'm going to have the attention I always wanted. I think I'm going to be safe from everything. I'm just to put them down and they may sound crazy and they might sound plausible, but just, just to get, all we're doing is the unearthing exposing up and out. All right. So what do I believe this positive or negative desire will give me more than the peace of God would bring me? Secondly, review your issues in list two and take each one through the preceding questions again. So again, what do I believe defending myself against this negative factor will give me more than the peace of God would bring me? What do I hope to accomplish in choosing to value this negative desire more than I desire only the peace of God? There's something there. There's something that you're actually clinging to because you've, you've taught yourself or somebody has taught you and you've accepted that there's something there that will distinguish you or bring value or something to mythical me that's better than what God's peace could offer you. Mm. Okay. Mm. Jesus leaves us with a meaningful question as we look upon our two lists. Is this what I would have in place of heaven and the peace of God? Mm. Big question. And this is from 
again, the lesson that we just read, 185. This is the choice you make. Be not deceived that it is otherwise. No compromise is possible in this. You choose God's peace or you have asked for dreams and dreams will come as you requested them. Yet will God's peace come just as certainly and to remain with you forever. Final step, which of these issues in both list one, the positives and two, the negatives, are you willing to offer to Holy Spirit for divine repurposing? Are there any beliefs, values, or judgments which require forgiveness? Can you perhaps see how the ego is consumed by the delusional idea that these idols will either complete us or destroy us? Mm -hmm. Everything we seek for here in the dream arises from some form of fear and lack. But in the peace of God, there is no fear or lack. In this peace, all is healed and complete. We are not asked to give up that which we presently believe will give us what we want in the world. There's no sacrifice in God. However, we are asked to give Holy Spirit our attachment to them. In other words, are we willing to allow him to divinely reinterpret and repurpose these illusions? If we don't do this, the ego will use them all, all the idols in the gap, both positive and negative illusions for self-sabotage and attack because they represent fear-based substitutes for the peace of God as our one shared and holy self. You know, we're not asked to give up the idols. We're afraid that something's going to be required or that we'll take a step back or a step down. In the recognition that God does not require our sacrifice, what we're doing is that carving out. I've been clutching this idol and I know it's not bringing me what I want, but I'm so afraid that if I let go of this, even that will be taken from me and I'll be left for the worse. If we will take that and loosen that stranglehold and open up and be willing to say, well, it hasn't served me, Holy Spirit, come look upon what I have been using as a substitute for the peace of God. Mm. Bring me the felt state. Let me drop into my heart and feel you as me so that this whole idea, this preposterous idea that we could sacrifice as we come closer to God simply is blown away. And you know that there's no sacrifice and you know that the will of God is your will and that nothing is wanted or more satisfying or more lovely than closing that imaginary gap between you and God. He just wants to show you the contrast so you'll choose again. Beautiful exercises. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I don't know how to thank you. <laughs> oh, Enough, yeah. you know. I mean, it, it's like um, when we choose the peace of God, as you've just so beautifully explained there. Thank you, sis. Thank you. Um, what happens? and you know this from your experience, mm -hmm. is that everything miraculously conspires, uh, you know, to meet our every need. Mm -hmm. it, 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 we could never have, we could never have imagined it, but it does, it just does. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. That was always my favorite part of handing things over to God even if I was afraid, because I always got to look back and, and give a testimony. And it was always the best part to watch wisdom, do something with the fragments that you offer and watch it be assembled in such a way that you just stand back and go, wow, you know, I cannot believe that he thought of every little final detail and brought in stuff that I could never have known. And it's just awesome. Like it, it was all for our joy, all for our good. 
even down these little things that you'd never thought to take into consideration, he does. He does. And he knows us, you know. Yeah. He knows us. He knows our um, individu individuated divine expression. He knows those little quirks. He knows that. And he meets them all with so much love so much comfort so much support it, it's just it's yeah. it's mind-boggling it's fun it's fun yeah. it's yeah. lovely to be loved by god it's like whoa. Isn't it? yeah he only wants for your good this is why we're just all of this is compromise he's saying i've given you everything why would you choose for nothing come home i want to just I want to watch you open your gifts. Yeah. <laughs> a storehouse of changeless, eternal, perfect gifts. <sighs> Choosing the peace of God with you and for you today. We love you, family. Yeah. I love you, sis, and I love you, beautiful Course in Miracles family. Yeah. Feel like we know each other very very well now yeah and we're gonna do our q a session right or have we already done that in the timeline well probably i think we did it two days ago <laughs> yes don't worry that that don't worry it's okay forgive her <laughs> your brother groaning right now <laughs> uh, yes. love you guys uh, love you guys see you tomorrow See ya. Bye.